everybody, hey everybody and welcome, and welcome back. back. My name is My Sue, name is Sue and, I'm and I'm from ML oh, oh. Embroidery. And over there on the computer is Dawn. Hello. Hello, he says. Today, we are going to be working on this. Now, I have started. You can see some of the stitching that I've done. And I did do a few, a few experiments. Now, the polka dots that you're seeing is my back fabric. So if I reveal it out, I have a, it's kind of a small desk, so it's kind of hard to keep everything together, but we're working on it. So we're, I just started this and you start from the center out. So start at the beginning and we're going to talk about how you can do this the different ways. Now I tried this one here, number one, that I have marked number one so I know which way it is. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you always want to make sure you remember the which one is the number one. And I tried, I think, with the scan in the camera, and I was a little bit off on it. It doesn't matter, though, because in the big picture, no one is going to see it when the, you know, next leaf will cover up this part. So I'm not worried. And then I went to the projector. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I have seen, this is the Le Hoffman leaf but there's a flower, the Hoffman flower. And I saw everybody working on that. And I thought that's the reason why I want a luminaire. So yes, for the projector, it saves you a lot of time, but if you don't have all that tech, you can still do it. And this will be stunning either way. Just remember not to be too picky about how it's working out. It, it'll be fine. So let's go over what you need to do. So it comes with instructions. Now I've printed out a few choice pieces. I didn't print out all the instructions. And in the PDF here, it numbers each piece that you're doing. Each piece right here. So I think there's like uh, 79 of them. And it also gives you uh, kind of an idea of what order to do them in to minimize the fabric stretching. Mom says hi. Hi, Mom. Yay. Oh, I forgot she was watching this. Oh, I have to do a secret one for her. <laughs> so understanding what you're doing is really important. Now, I printed out a list of all of the designs and one thing I tried when I was playing around is that I just kind of hooped this in the middle and I did them in the order but I changed how the design is set up if that makes any sense so I would do number one two three four five six and on the machine I would turn it and you know move it and line it up that ended up taking a whole lot of time because I thought that would be a cool way of doing it, but that ended up taking a lot of time. So the way to do it is to hoop and unhoop your fabric so it's basically at the same angle as the design, and then you don't have to move it. That'll save you a ton of time. Just for clarity, this is the Hoffman print panel, so yes, it is a Yes, it is a panel. I know it's hard to see on my desk, but yes. And I'm going to tell you guys how I put all of this together. It's all rolled up. That's why it's hard to tell. Yeah, I know. I know. I do know. I could show you the edges. The size of the panel is 43 by 43. So make sure you give yourself a lot of room. And uh, there's a whole bunch of different colors of these panels i've seen like christmasy kind of colors bright pinks and purples so pick the one that you like and stitch away it's actually a whole lot of fun it is a whole lot of work 
There are a ton of designs, so you might feel a little overwhelmed by it because there's so much of everything. Um, but just pace yourself. So I focused on my yellow. I'm not worrying about the rest of the colors, and we'll talk about colors in a minute too. Uh, I just worry about the yellow ones, and I'm not. I'll the next level here. These big green ones. I'll deal with them when I get to them. So one step at a time. Yeah, one step at a time. You, you can, can do it. You can do this with, you know, any machine, any hoop. You're just going to go about doing it a little bit differently than I will. I'm going to show you from stickers to templates to we're going to stitch one on the Luminaire. Captain Jack is really excited about this. Um, and we're going to work on it. So read the instructions full out. She gives you lots and lots of tips and tricks of how to make it easier for yourself. I am using the magnetic hoop, which I'm telling you is absolutely wonderful. Um, if you don't have one, don't worry. I mean, get one if you can, if you can't, don't worry about it. Just use what you have. You, you're just going to, you know, need a, a table sort of thing to be able to hoop everything well. But you can still hoop it as long as it hoops. It uh, doesn't matter. So this is something I'm working on. And then I have all of these uh, just printed out so I can see the orientation because I use a bigger table over there so I can spread out a little bit because I end up knocking everything down. So we'll go over that. Uh, first, let's go over what I've done here. So I have the panel. I'm just pulling over one edge here. I have the panel and I have it spray basted to my warm and natural. And then I have my back fabric. Now I'm not paying much attention to the back, so I just used the yardage that I had. One idea that uh, Stitch Delight puts forth, which I think is actually really cool, if you put a plain fabric on here and use a different color bobbin, you can have a design on the back and the front, or you can change your bobbin to match your thread colors and have a really beautiful design on the back as well as, yeah, yeah, which I thought was, you know, me and bobbins, I'm not actually going to wind all the bobbins, but what a beautiful idea. So another thing that she suggests, and I'm going to do for the next one, is on the sides here, uh, sew on, you know, a good 10 inch piece of fabric so that when you were on the edge here doing the uh, leaf edges that you have something to hoop and if you're going to frame it it will help with that so i'm going to do that for the bloom the flower one which is something we'll be working on next and i think that's a good idea it doesn't have to be perfect or anything um but you know i think it's good now i have batting that's extra so that's gonna help so now you can you know based your design your your sorry your panel to everything i don't find that that did a whole lot i i experimented as i started this and what I did is I spray basted it very carefully. I kind of cornered Dawn into helping me with this one. And then we used quilting safety pins just to help hold it together. And the reason why I did that, I know you guys have heard me say no pins ev ever on my machine. I did that because you have to move it around so much. I don't want it to get pulled apart. So that's how I'm doing mine. Now, there's lots of other ways of doing it. You don't have to put the backing fabric. If you just want the panel and the batting, then put a piece of stabilizer, cutaway stabilizer, um, and then you can just add the backing 
later. Not everybody likes seeing the stitching on the backing. They want it to be uh, clean. So that's how you would do that. So, whew, any questions? What color panel did you get for the flower? It's blue with a bit of purple. There's so many to choose from. Someone in our group put up a orange flower. Nice. Oh, man. I showed them to Lynn. Hi, Lynn, by the way. And um, it's just amazing. She was like, what? And I said, yeah, we're going to do the quilting on it. She's like, what? <laughs> it's, it's really cool. So I have a luminaire so I can skip a lot of these steps, but I wanted to explain it to you guys. If you don't have the technology, you can still do this. Your needle goes up and down the same way as mine. I just happen to be a, a nerd and I like um, technology. So, so are there any questions? Uh, no. Flower, my hubby gets roped into helping me anytime I've basted a quilt. It's not easy. It kind of is a two-man job. I, I kind of cornered him and I moved the table out so he couldn't get out. I'm like, could you help me, please? And he said, do I have a choice? Not really. So it would be nice. It would be nice. <laughs> did you pre-wash the panel? I did not. I don't pre-wash anything. I don't find it necessary. You may get a little bit of shrinkage, but you know, basically if I ever wash this, I'd wash it by hand and hang it to dry or in the machine and hang it to dry. I'm sure if you put any of the quilt stuff in the dryer, it's going to shrink up, but it, it would give it a little bit of character too. It wouldn't look brand new. So pre-wash, no, I can't remember what Stitch Delight thinks about that, but I don't. I think it's just, um, you know, fine. I think it's just fine like this. Maria says she bought the flower panel not knowing you were going to do the video, so she's very excited. Yes, yes. As <clears throat> soon as I get this done, and I'm going to try to do a time-lapse video of the whole thing, and I think that would be absolutely incredible to watch it all come together. So it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm going to get at it. And then we're going to start on the flower one. And get, I've always wanted to do that since she started doing it. So I'd like to point out on stitchdelight.net on the website, there's more than one leaf pattern. Okay, there's two of them. And one is for the Hoffman quilt. And the other one is for smaller hoops and it won't work on the panel. So make sure you get the right one. The one that I did a video that I made a big mistake and ruined six hours of stitching. <sighs> it happens to everyone. It, it happens. happens to everyone. That is the second one. So I'm going to call the panel one the first, the other one the second. Okay, so what you should do, now this takes a little bit of time, Where, but, sorry. yeah? Where did you get your panel from? Um, <clears throat> I got it online, and I got it from, I think it was, no, I don't know, I'll have to look, just one of the quilt stores that are local like a small canadian ontario canada quilt store dances with stitches maybe in cambridge i think that's maybe where i got it and there'll be lots to choose from so again don't be overwhelmed just grab them so the stuff i'm going to show you guys next is you do it once and then you'll be able to do these panels what an incredible gift this would be for someone so um it's awesome so what she suggests she being stitch delight is you print out all of your templates now i only printed one because that's all I need to show you guys how to do it because I have the projector. So there we go. 
So she printed them out, and she is brilliant. She printed them out. There's 79 pages of them, and she put each one in her scan and cut, which would scan it and then cut all the wobbly lines. And she did that for all of them and saved herself a ton of time. And she laminated each one because she's planning on making more. So once you take the time to do all that, you put them in a Ziploc baggie, and next time you want to do one, you just take them out. And I think that would be fantastic. So I just did one to show you guys. They are all numbered beautifully, so you are not going to wonder which one you were doing. And we're going to, you know, pretend we're working on this. So the way we do it is the same way that we do any template precision placement. So you can line it up. See how I have it lined up here? And all I did was fold it on these lines and line it up. That is a bit off, but that's okay. I'm going to leave this sticker because I need to mark number one. So yeah. So that's one way of doing it. And you know, when we take it to the machine, you want your needle exactly here and then you can just stitch away. So like I said, once you have it done, it is done. Now, another precision way of doing it, and you can line everything up and try to be as precise as you can. It just takes a minute. See, I kind of moved it. You can see, I don't know how well you guys can see it. Now it's off. It. Uh, you could see how far I'm off, but don't fret. It's really not going to be noticeable. So something like that. And then you can take a pin and you can pop a carefully pop a pin through there and then you'll have it marked. So you can also take chalk and mark your lines and do it like that. It's, it's not as difficult as it seems, but do take your time. And if you need to do the templates, print them out. The perfect solution would be the dime, uh, printable, um, what's it called? Printable sticky stuff that I love and I can't find in my office, but I will. I know I have some. That would be awesome because you can see through it. You would place it on and then take it to your machine, line it up, tear it off, put it on the backing, use it again and again and again. So that would be a lovely shortcut for that. So, how many people have I lost? Yes, print and stick. Yes, thank you, Judy Quill. I have not had enough caffeine, just saying. I also took a complete day off yesterday, so I'm still in day off mode because we really don't take a day off very often. Uh, so, yeah, forgive me for my lack of words for this. Um so yes, that's what you have to do if you're doing templates. I used the camera on these and I probably just needed to take a little more time on it, but I didn't find I could line them up really well. I was also trying just for the sake of it to, you know, move everything. I am going to have to move a little bit, but let's look at this now. I am doing today we're going to be stitching out number eight, which is this one. So I looked at my design setup right here. I looked at my design setup so I know where number eight is. Oh, Jill, thank you very much. Thank you. This lesson is wonderful. Yes. I want everyone to take a deep breath and do this because it is absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then everything, you know, if you needed a template, you put the template down. Uh, she puts a little warning in there that these are all different. One through eight are different, so you can't use the same one. So don't. She says, don't. They're all different. So I'm doing number eight. And I'm, I printed out this, which is all of the designs. And see, they're lovely and marked, uh, number eight. So I checked. This is how the design comes in to the machine. 
And so I hooped accordingly. And I, I'm not going for absolute perfection of the angle, but just generally so I don't have to move it a whole lot. And that's how you figure out hooping and you're gonna be turning and hooping to make everything fit. This is an eight by 12 hoop, by the way. And that is why I marked number one. So I know that this is up. This is number one and we go around like that just to keep everything straight because they do look the same and I want to make sure I'm putting the right number on the right leaf. So that's how you do that. So make sure you're getting that straight. So far, so good. Okay. Now we're going to talk about colors. And this is what I had a bit of a hard time with because I don't really know how it's going to look and you have so many choices. So I decided I wanted this to blend. So I picked colors that will blend into the fabrics. Now, you can do anything you want. If you just want to use white all over it, you can use white. It, I wouldn't use black because that would make it darker. <laughs> If you want them to match exactly, that would look smart. If you want them to be brighter and bigger, that would be okay too. So I did something like this. So this, uh, I can't show you where it ends up, but I'm gonna show you the colors that I picked. So kind of a, a darker green for, I think it's somewhere out here, that sort of thing. And this lighter green is for level number two. So it doesn't match, but it's going to accentuate it. The, the quilting designs are stunning. And then I've got some browns and some orangey browns. So try to decide, you know, what you want out of it. I have the yellow that I'm using here on the machine. Uh, but anything goes. Like, I could have chosen a brighter orange for this first set here. So even like that or brighter than that, I don't have one handy, but, uh, and that would change the whole look of it because there is quite a bit of orange here around the outside. And if you notice the stitching is basically around the outside. So I think it would make the yellow stand out. This is this is the one I had a hard time with. The yellow would stand out and, you know, I would, oh, I just thought it would be cool. So you there's a lot of choices. So you could pick in down here, the really light green like I did. That's what I wanted to try. Or this is kind of like a brownish color or right in here. It's kind of a limey green. Um, but this will go with everything and it's going to brighten it up. So, you know, anything goes. I don't think you could make a mistake in colors unless you put hot pink on this. However, I think that would still look good though. <laughs> um... I bet this would be gorgeous with some variegated thread. You know, I thought about that and I think what I'm going to do is try to get another one of these or another one of the flowers and try it with some variegated thread here and there and see how it looks because it's all quilting de designs <laughs> and it, I, I think it might have a completely different effect. So yeah, um, someone mentioned a poinsettia panel. That would be so fun. What the poinsettia panel is, I'm pretty sure, is the leaf the leaf design, this whole design in Christmas colors. So it's got red, burgundy, and then it goes out to green and it looks like a poinsettia. So have a look around. There are the color combinations. Now I will say, just so you understand, it's the same design, but they change the colors. So once you get the Stitch Delight designs, you can use them on any 43 by 43 Hoffman leaf panel, any color, any, anything. I just uh, kind of, you know, I like this one, the fall one. So I see it now in the notes. Use that link just below the picture. You will see a video tab. 
yes, you can watch her video. She's doing it on a very big machine, a multi-needle machine that she's setting up the, um, you know, templates and doing everything like that. I just gave you guys a quick run through. We talk about, you know, placement, template placement, and, you know, it's the same thing. I am going to use the projector because I was really happy how it worked. And like I said, this in the back of my mind, when I said I wanted a luminaire with a projector for this, <laughs> for this, because I, these look amazing and if you go on to stitchdelight.net and you see the one that she did it is breathtaking so that's why i thought this would be a lot of fun to do and you know what honestly by the time you finish doing this whole hoffman panel that you will be a pro at placing templates and precision placing templates it's good yeah. practice and it doesn't matter if you're slightly off. So I thought it was a win-win situation and awesome. Awesome. So, okay, I'm doing number eight, which is this one. And I've checked and this is going in. I have, I have the order written out and I've crossed off the ones that I've done. So I've done one, five, seven, um, I can't read my writing, six and eight. I can't read my writing. So never mind. <laughs> never mind. So I know I'm going on eight because this is nothing that it's not something that you're going to finish in one shot. So keep track, mark what you need to with stickers and make sure you know what you're doing. So let's take this to the machine so we can watch this set up and stitch out. So it's a little bit awkward. You gotta have enough room for this. So, okay. I, I managed before. It's just, uh, what camera are we on? The main There we go. Gotta remember to not stop talking. <laughs> Dawn is just on the other side of my machine to help this through. Yeah, you know, you just work your way. He's just helping me because we're live and, you know, we don't want to mess up the whole thing. Uh, please be careful with pins. I will never put a pin inside the sewing hoop so now you can roll stuff up and that should probably stay on top of the arm and on this side just roll it up um they have hoop guards for these hoops i wish i had one i don't so i just make it do and it just kind of magnetizes in there and holds everything back. You can use hair clips. There's a ton of things you can do. So, okay, that's in and it looks good. I always double check my magnetic hoop to make sure the bottom ha is lined up with the top. Now, the next thing I did was I put all of these designs on a zip drive. I know that's something I said I wouldn't do for the Luminaire, but there's 75 of them and it's really easy to just go down the numbers. So I did it that way. So I've got my USB in there and on the Luminaire, you go to the pocket here, which is memory. And then we're going to go to this. This is the universal, universal symbol for USB, which I do have plugged in. And then you can see all the designs. So we can scroll up and it, they're all in order. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's exactly as I saw it on the picture. So, so far easy. I just found it really, really fun to do it this way. And I don't, I don't want to block up all my memory. So, now for the fun part. 
if you marked everything on the uh, panel itself, you just have to move to you line up your needle with the crosshairs, that sort of thing. If you're using the wonderful print and stick paper, line it up. Uh, that's probably the easiest. Line it up. And once it's lined up, then you remove it and make sure you stick it on a, a back sort of thing so you can use it again. And if you have a camera, scan, and then you can place. We are going to play with the projector. And I, like I said, this is why I got this. And I'm so happy. First of all, we're going to set it. I am not going to worry about color. Now, in these designs, there is a, an outline and then the actual stitching, which is gorgeous to watch stitch out. Now, the outline is your get out of jail free card. And it's just going to outline the whole thing. First of all, to hold it down. Second of all, if you're way, 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 way off, you only have one line to pick out. And that will save you possibly, you know, a ton of time. So I love that she did that. So I'm not going to bother with colors because basically I'm using one. So what we're see, you can see here, it's the outline. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to turn off the um, uh, light on the machine. So I'm hoping it'll make it easier for you guys to see and not harder. When I'm doing this off camera, I don't have all the filming lights on, so it's a lot easier to see. So let's just turn it off. And it may be kind of weird. I'll turn it back on when we're stitching. And then we're going to go up here to this. I don't even know what it is. It looks like a cone. It does look like a cone, but it's projecting, I guess. So. Yeah, it's projecting. <clears throat> and we're going to go to the projector. And it takes a minute. And we're okay with that. And I can see it perfectly. How well can you guys see it? Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing and you see it moving and that's because I am moving the square that shows everything. So what I need to do clearly is go to your move keys here at the bottom. I guess you're not on this camera, but I don't know. Will it show? Yeah, you can see it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. So we all we have to do is play the matching game, basically. It doesn't really show colors like it does on camera. That's the camera scan, picking up the scan. Yeah, it's kind of cool. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Well, we're bright and cheery people. So, I mean, you know, that works. So I'm moving to line it up. And we're going to have to move over and down a little bit. Whoops, I was holding it. It seems a little bit fiddly maybe, but it just takes a minute to get it where we want. Oh, but I need to pay attention. No, I hit the wrong button. I did, I did. <laughs> well, it's, that's okay. Because we can really see how you're lining it up. Yeah, I, I, I prefer, I almost had it. So if you, it's kind of hard because if you press it, and hold it, it moves faster. And if you do it too much, it's going to zoom to the edge of the hoop and really move. So that's coming along. But this is like absolute precision placement, guys. And that is fantastic. So that little noise there was my machine telling me that we're too close to the edge, which is fine. I, I knew I would just make the edge here. So, I mean, play with it. That's almost right on. It's got to go up a little bit more. And if we want to see more, we just move it so we can see all the different spots. So it needs to go here a little bit. 
it's kind of fun. Like, it, it may seem a little tedious, but I've only done this a few times, so I'm thinking I'm going to get better at it. Does it need to rotate a little bit? Yep. Or? Okay. I, you I can, just didn't know how I was looking at it. You can rotate, like, 1%. See, now I've got that pretty close. Um, I think I'll move it over a little bit. See how good that is? That looks awesome. Isn't that cool? And you could see even precisely here that it fits the wobbles on the design. So we can go and look at that corner there. No, move. Thank you. And look at that. Nice. You pretty much know that's pretty good. And to move the projector square, I'm just moving it on the screen. It's a touch screen. So I think we need to... go back to it and it's just so you can show them. Oh. You can... Actually, they can probably see the whole thing doing it this way. So you can see what buttons I'm pressing. So I'm just moving the angle. And I'm going to slide this over a little bit. See, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. So I just hold on this red frame and it turns blue and I just move it where I want. You can use the stylus or whatever you want. Now, I am going to get better at this. Remember, I'm a newbie. So, you know, you know, I think the angle has to go a little bit, a little bit more. I'm trying to get this part lined up. So, in that fun, you haven't really, Don, you haven't really seen the projector in action. So, I've got it, now. I've got it here. I think it has to go maybe up and maybe up another one. So, I will get faster at it, but I, I think, I mean, anybody can do this. Now, it is not perfect. So, close, yeah, it's, you know, I think it's close enough um, that it'll be fine. What is it doing? Oh, just turning it back on. I think it's close enough that it'll be fine. I could fiddle around with it a little bit more, but I really think it's okay. I'm going to just check around. Isn't that cool, though? Judy quotes reminding everyone that even though you're using a projector, they can do it with templates and do the exact yes, same thing. Yes, I just <laughs> like the technology, so that's what I'm using. Anything that I do, you guys can do too. You just have to do it a different way. So like I said before we got to the machine or when when we put the, the design in, uh, have it marked you just line it up with line your needle up with the mark so you do the move thing so it fits over and stitch and you're done so i enjoy it but you don't have to have it you do have to have kind of a large hoop eight by twelve i don't know if it goes any small smaller for this i'll have to check but that's what you need to have. It's big designs. Now, the other way you can do this, and I just want to show you quickly, is uh, I've got it set up how I want. We are going to use, say you had, you know, a McDreamy or a Stellaire. You can use the camera and you can scan. So this is when everything moves. So you got to make sure it's good. So it's scanning the background. And I use this all the time on McDreamy. All the time I scan the background and it's awesome. There we go. So now on the machine here, look. Is that not awesome, Don? That looks great. Yeah. And you can see, you know, it's off a tiny bit, but... You can't be that picky so, about all it. all the fiddling around that you did with the projector, you can do on the McDreamy just by scanning like this. Yes. Yep. Yes. If if we started with it, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to move it. If we started with it up here, we'd do the same move things and move it around. And you shouldn't have to 
um, play with the orientation because we, uh, just a little bit, but because we hooped it that way, we don't have to worry about it. So you don't have to have a projector. I just think it's kind of cool. And you could do it with the camera. If you don't have a camera, then you can do it on any machine as long as your hoop's big enough um, with templates. And this is how I'm going to do the whole thing. And what I'm going to do, so the next one, I'm going to take the hoop off. I'm going to move it to the next one, bring it up, line it up, stitch. And it'll go faster than what I've done. So let me go back and turn my light on. Light is on page four, if anyone's wondering. Um, and I put it, I put everything back. So the camera, or sorry, the projector doesn't work very well for you guys to see, but I don't turn the light on and off when I'm doing it myself. The not having all the studio lights on um, helps a lot. So we're ready to go. We're going to do our get out of jail free card first and breathe while we're doing it. Before I start stitching, are there any questions? Um, I do have a scanner and yes, I use it, says Susan Weehy. Yes, I used McDreamy's camera and scanning all the time. Uh, I think it's wonderful for lining up. The projector does the same thing. It just projects it so whatever you have whatever which way you're doing it um i wouldn't use it enough to justify the cost yeah i'm i'm with you on that for sure Mc yeah not everybody does no no um i wanted it for this and you know blah 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 mcdreamy would have probably lasted me for years i have had no need to upgrade it but it's good for the channel it's good for the shows you guys even if you're never going to get a luminaire you can see what it does it's cool i watch tons of videos on the luminaire just to see the tech so i hope um everyone can do this is the pal something that's useful for something like this uh it will help you line up everything for sure when you're hooping um it's the same thing that's that um light from dime that projects the crosshairs oh so yeah definitely yeah. would help out quite a bit oh yeah <laughs> if you have that use what you have if you have a regular 8x12 hoop and no camera, you can still do beautiful work. It'll probably be more precise than what I've done. I was experimenting, but yes. And don't be too hard on yourself for this one. You're not going to notice that. No. Bit off no. Anyway. This, this leaf will cover it all up. So just, you know, enjoy the process. So if there's no more questions, Sue, you have a vested interest in it, so it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. That's kind of what I thought. If I can, you know, get it, why not? And then I can show everyone and, you know, like a, you just can see what the machine can do and see what your machine can do because I just showed you guys this gorgeous scan. And I mean, that's awesome. That's an and awesome way of doing shop it. for good deals on machines because... Let's be honest, that's that's the reason we got it. We well, got a good deal. That's the only reason why we got it. We got an awful sweet deal. And not from Brother or anything like that, just from the guy we buy machines from. So, yeah, it was a deal we couldn't refuse, and he only had, like, one. So we just went, okay, well, we'll figure it out later. And we did. So, ready to set, stitch the outline, which is the get out of jail free I Let's have, do it because we can all do this. Yeah. I think this is an incredible project, guys. Oh, that's pretty good. Oh, that's very good. Yeah, that's really good. Oh, that's my goodness. Out. Yep. There that's you go, nice. guys. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, a little bit off there. That's okay. So if you were way off... 
you know, say this part was way off somehow, it happens. Stop it, pick it out, do it again. Carefully pick it out. So that's why she put in a color change. And I just think that's wonderful that she did. Um, I think it's very helpful. So let's go and stitch out the beautiful design. Sorry if this is in the way. I'll move it a little bit. There we go. A little bit. Yes. Susan Weehee, thank you very much. New fun for the next machine. <laughs> no, no. No, no. I have not spent enough time with uh, Captain Jack the Luminaire yet. I He still does a lot of things that I haven't discovered, but... I, I want some stitch time, I said to Don. Can you see how awesome it would look if you picked orange for here? Because it's just around the outside and it's going through. I wasn't sure, so I just picked yellow. So you can actually make your own panels on the luminaire using all the design yeah the stitching for it yep i saw that eileen roche did a thing on it and um you can scan it and then use the you know kind of designing software there's a ton in these machines mcdreamy could do it too and you just trace it on the screen and fill it in so you can but I absolutely love uh, Stitch Delight quilting designs, so I just thought I'd do it this way. I can do a video on how you would do it right on the machine, uh, if you guys want. I enjoyed seeing you with Eileen. You look great. Woo, thank you. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. <laughs> It was so much fun, though. She is wonderful. I got to talk to her for a few minutes beforehand, um, and it was really nice. She, she asked me, what's the worst thing that happened to you on a live? And I said, well, the live I did this morning, I had hiccups for most of it. And she's like, what? <laughs> said, yeah, I got the hiccups for most of the whole time. I said, it'll, you get you I get know, hiccups. loud hiccups, and she laughed and laughed. Anyways, so wonderful. Thanks, everyone, for watching. It was a ton of fun. She's delightful to talk about, and I have the same passion as she does about embroidery and the small town charm and the whole bit. I love it. So Sheila says, yes, please do a video. Um, yes. I will, because I think that would be beneficial. Uh, like I said, I love Stitch Delight, so I just wanted to do it her way. And I think it's um, awesome. I too would like a video. Sure, Jill, no problem. You didn't look nervous, you were great. Thank you, thank you. It was, um, it was fun, it was really fun. I loved it. Hiccups, we are used to you having... I know. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks, Lynn. So if you guys have the designs and the panel, get started on it. Try not to be overwhelmed or scared or anything. Like I said, I'm off a fair amount on, on some of them, and it's just really not going to show. Um, I'm going to do a time lapse of everything, even the lining up, I'm going to do a time lapse of it. And um, I think that'll be an incredible video. The final look of these are incredible. Oh, I love it. Um, and it's fun to get it lined up no matter which way you do it and see that get out of jail free outline going on because uh, that's just hold your breath until that finishes stitching because it's whoo you know whoo kind of great winter project yeah and it's something as long as you leave yourself a breadcrumb trail you can do a little bit 
and then very carefully put it aside, take the hoop off, don't leave the hoop on, and you can, you know, get back at it. Some days I enjoy listening to my machine stitch, other days I do not. So, and they take long enough to do that once you set it up, you go, you know, I go to back to my other desk, I don't walk away, but... Jackie Cheek, hello Jackie. The show is great, Sue. You didn't look nervous at all. Loved seeing your work. That was really fun seeing everything. Hey, look at that. Guess what, guys? We're done. What do you think? What do you think? And you know what? I made a huge mistake. Uh-oh. I have the wrong color of yellow. Well, no, we're just going okay. to bring it in. Yep. Just keep with it. Yep, because we have all opposite leaves. So I'm going to go back to the desk here and we can look at what we did. So normally to do the next one, I would not take this off the machine. You can't tell when, when you're looking further away at it. You can't tell the now nah, you can't tell, but under the studio lights, it's just slightly different. You know what? That's going to look awesome. Uh, I like the different... Sh happy accident, guys. Happy accident. I didn't notice it at all. And you can see I'm slightly off. This side is perfect, and for some reason this side is off. But See, when we were close up, you could see it. But from this distance that we see now with the dust cam, you can't tell that you're off. Yeah, which is cool, isn't it? So don't be too hard on yourself when you're doing this, for sure. But isn't that beautiful? And that really didn't take long. So my next steps, and this would be done on the machine, is I'm going to look at what number I'm going to mark off. I probably don't have a pen. I have a fabric pen that will do. Make sure you mark off what you've done. So I'm going to mark off number eight. And then the next one I'm going to do is four. So I'm going to look one, two, three, four. And I'm going to use the same yellows, brighter yellow, slightly brighter yellow for these ones. And I really think it's going to give it a great effect. So now I'm going to find Mary the... Says, no mistakes, creative opportunity. Oh, yeah. Don't ever sweat it. You never know. You never know, you know, how amazing a mistake can be. I always try to tell you guys, don't sweat it. Okay, so I found number four, and this is the leaf that we're doing. So it's um, oriented differently. So I'm going to have to, you know, move stuff around. So basically it's going to stitch. So I have to turn it like upside down. Um, and then just do the same things and keep going and going and going. And uh, I think this is going to be stunning. I am so excited about this. This is kind of like revived me because it's, it's so beautiful, don't you think? I can't wait to do the flower, Dawn. I can't wait to see it done. <laughs> um, personally, I love the look on Lynn's face when I showed her this. Her, her jaw just dropped and she's like what i said and they have lynn colors too <laughs> and i showed her one that was neons and she's like what yeah lynn yeah lynn, it lynn's asking can you do the leaves in order like one two three four five okay you can the reason why i'm doing them in different orders because every time you stitch on something there's what we call push pull so it pushes the fabric this way and it might pull it this way. So it's better to kind of like, what's the word? Set it off, balance it by yeah. doing it this way. So you do it, you know, this way and then the sides and then fill it in. And because the fabric stretches, right? The Skipping around helps balance the fabric. Yeah, and so you don't, you're not affected by the stretch quite as much. So do follow her instructions. They, the instructions are 100% completely clear and do them in the order that she says. 
um, I will probably, when I start getting way out here, I'm going to mark them with not these stickers, but just plain stickers, the numbers, so I don't get mixed up and then just take it off when I'm doing it, just so I know. Um, I don't think there's any problem with doing that. And we're starting at the middle and we're basically working our way out. And that has to do with the fabric as well. We don't want to have the fabric shift or anything. So that's why we're doing it. I know it's tempting to go from one side to the other, but this side is going to look different if you do it because this might be stretched out and this isn't. So just follow it in the order. It's easy enough to we, do. We get Lynn to do this. Uh, yeah, I think anyone would find that fun. I'm thrilled with the camera and the um, the projector. Maureen says this is tempting. Oh, I know. You can do it, Maureen. Um, check out some of the finished ones, and you'll be hooked. I think this is a nice way to really practice your embroidery skills. And this is another reason why I'm going forth with it again and again, and we'll do the flower one because it's different. It's really going to fine tune your skills, your placement skills, your stitching skills, all of that. So I think it's a very, very good uh, project to do. And it's not that hard. And, um, I love it. I think the Hoffman prints are stunning. If I can find more, I want to get a whole bunch of different colors and just do them because the wow factor with these are incredible, I think. Don't you think, Don? <clears throat> yes. Okay, so that's going to conclude today. I am going to keep going on this. I want to make some progress. I have to do some production work first, but... Who said Judy Quilt? I need placement skill practice. Well, you know, like I said, by the time you finish this panel, you're, you're going to be an expert. <laughs> and it's perfect to practice because if you're slightly off, it does not matter. It does not matter. I would also suggest making a project bin of your threads that you've picked out. So you don't, and don't dip into that bin. That's what I did. I pulled out the yellow for something else and then I didn't put it back in the right spot. Um, that's how I do it. So I always have the thread handy when I'm bringing this to the machine. I just bring all the thread with it and then I don't have to worry. I saw an animal panel. Ooh. Oh, I didn't know that Chris. Chris Yost, they're smaller panels of the flower that are great to get started on. Wonderful. Well, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. And I love Stitch Delight, and I love her quilting, and I can't imagine uh, how much time she spent on doing this, but I'm here to say thank you. What a fantastic idea. What a fantastic set of designs we get towards the outside. They get more traditional quilting designs, but have fun with your colors. Have fun with your panel. Don't be afraid of it. One step at a time, mark your progress and uh, just do it. That's what I'm going to say. Just go for it. Just do it. I can't wait to finish this one. I can't wait to see it finished. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a like, subscribe if you're new. Hello and welcome if you're new. I'll have my nails done on Monday. Monday we're doing a mug rug stitch along, which I covered up so I'm gonna bring it out right here. Be patient. Yes, be patient. That's what we're doing on Monday. Uh, tomorrow is a holiday for a lot of people, so we're not doing a video tomorrow. Um, so I'll see you guys on Monday. And if you have... Oh, Ellen. Oh, good point. The, the digitizing is on sale uh, right now on Stitch Delight. So if you are planning on doing these, trying it, uh, go grab it while it's on sale for sure. If you have questions, 
Go into the OML Embroidery University Facebook group and ask away. We'll be happy to help. And I can't wait to see what you guys do. So I'll see you guys on Monday. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.